What's up everybody? Welcome back to another one of Lucky Strike Living. I'm assuming that a lot of you clicking on this video don't know exactly who I am. My name is Captain Gordy. I am a third generation captain here in Naples, Florida with my beautiful wife, my amazing first mate, and we're on my 33 Onslow Bay. So a lot of you have clicked on this video because yes, I did um, quit a $150,000 job to become a charter fisherman. Gonna go over kind of my whole story, background, was it worth it, what it takes, all that sort of stuff. If you guys are new to the channel, this is a very different video. I am a charter captain, like I said, and I take people fishing for a living. I film all of our charters. I film a lot of hunting videos with my wife, dove hunting, probably do some duck hunting this year. But this video is all about kind of our life and is it worth quitting your job to step into the charter business or to go into your dream job. If you like fishing, hunting videos, really appreciate it. If you would like, share and subscribe, be a part of the Lucky Strike family, and let's jump right into it. So a lot of you who are subscribed know uh, that I was a tennis player way back in the day. So I was a tennis player in the juniors and through my whole junior career, um, I was ranked very, very highly in the country, ranked number one in the 12s, 14s, 16s, 18s, and then got a full scholarship to University of Florida, where is where I met my lovely wife, who might be decent at softball if you don't know her. Her softball name is Aubrey Monroe. Obviously, it's Aubrey Watson now, but go check her out. Um, and then I did the professional circuit for a very short period of time. It wasn't the life for me. And then when I moved back to Naples, uh, from college is when I picked up um, one of my really first job and it was a very good job. It was the head uh, teaching pro at a very well-known country club here in Naples, Florida and it paid very well. The benefits were incredible and free breakfast, lunch, dinner, anything you can think of that a business would give an employee, they gave it to me and it was an amazing opportunity first out of college made a little bit of money and very quickly figured out that having a boss having a schedule doing what other people say not being able to kind of do the things that i like to do is not really in uh is not my goal not what i wanted to do and without any real dreams or hopes of jobs and things like that I decided to quit that job after six months um, and a little bit more of a backstory is my great grandfather was a commercial fisherman here in Naples. So my dad started Lucky Strike, uh, I believe in this early 1980s, somewhere in there. Um, he was a charter captain for I believe 20 years, got the business going and when I turned three, he became my tennis coach, completely hung up his spurs on uh, the fishing side, and I think he either sold the business name, he definitely sold all his boats, everything was gone, and we really didn't do any fishing for work. We would obviously go out and catch some pompano on the beach and do a little bit of offshore fishing, but really the name of the game for us was tennis. We traveled all over the place, and like we said, did all the national things in, in the tennis world. Um, so jumping back to when I quit my job, I went online, I was like, man, I wonder if my dad's business name is available. And I Googled it on GoDaddy or whatever those websites are. And sure enough, Lucky Strike Fishing was available to buy. And I said, man, that would be super cool. My dad still has a 28 Mako, which is the family boat that we had. So I went to ask him, I said, hey, do you mind if I run this for charters and kind of see if I like this whole world of fishing? He said, absolutely, go ahead and try it. So I bought the name, uh, got all the insurance, didn't have any clientele, didn't have any of my dad's old clientele, kind of started from the ground up and slowly, slowly worked. And first year, I think I did my best to do one trip a week, maybe two trips a week, which barely paid for the bills. Aubrey and I were trying to get married, thinking about it. She was wanting to get married way sooner. Uh, way sooner. Yeah. Whatever. But uh, we were trying to figure it all out and see what we could do. Because I knew if I could be a charter captain, 
I knew I'd be pretty good at it. I have the family history of it. And in Naples, there's always a bunch of tourists coming into town, a lot of tourism here. And I thought I could make it work. And I wanted to give myself the opportunity to be my own boss and give it a shot. And if it failed, then it would fail when I was 25, 26. And I wouldn't regret it if I tried it at 35 when I'd have a family and kids and all that sort of stuff. So at 20, was it 25? Mm -hmm. 25, like I said, quit my tennis teaching job, went full in on the charters, did one trip a week, just trying to pay the bills, make ends meet. And then all of a sudden COVID happens. I was like, oh my gosh, I just started this business. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. Nobody knows what's going on. And we are very blessed that we are here in Florida and we were only shut down for a couple weeks and we had a very, very good season. And that boosted the business probably three X. So instead of one trip a week, I was averaging like three trips a week. And it, I was like, oh my gosh, there's, there's something to this. So kept working, kept working, putting and in, reinvesting into newer boats and new rods and all the gear and all that sort of stuff. And year four was a little bit better than year three. Year five was a little bit better and it just slowly kept getting better. But it is a ton of work. Uh, in season, sometimes we'll work 20 days in a row from five to five. So usually our trips start somewhere at seven, 7.30 and either we have two half days, which is 7.30 to 11.30 and noon to four, or we have a full day trip with one set of customers. But it's 12 hours minimum every single day for 20, for 20 days straight sometimes, and it will wear you completely out. And you know, a lot of people can't handle that. So charter fishing is being in the service industry as we're trying to provide the best experience we can for our customers and that can be very, very draining. A lot of people assume, oh man, you're a fishing captain, you get to fish every day. It's like, well, no, I haven't caught a fish in a long time, personally. All my customers catch fish, I get to watch people catch the fish, and my personality, I love it. I, don't, I wouldn't change it for the world. I love when my wife catches fish, my dad catches fish, I don't have to catch anything. I'm totally happy. But if you're going in the business or it's gonna, quit your job, become a charter captain, know that you are not gonna be fishing, you're gonna be doing all the prep work, and you are in the service industry. service industry. And your job is to make sure that they have a good time, bait hooks if you have to, keep the boat clean, do all the things that you could never imagine. Plus, insurance is in cra crazy high, buying a boat, insanely expensive. There's a lot of things that you have to do and trust in yourself in order to do it. Um, so the question, is it worth it? For me, a billion, trillion, quadrillion percent, totally, totally worth it because I have the personality to be in the service industry, to deal with the customers. Like I said, I, I'm totally okay with not catching the fish, treating them like their family. That totally works for me. Working incredibly long hours, day after day after day after day, doesn't bother me at all. But the fact that I can be my own boss, decide what I want to do, when I want to do it, if I don't feel good or a family member's not doing right, I can cancel a trip, deal with them, and I don't have somebody over me forcing me to go if I'm not having a great day or things aren't going right or if the weather's really, really bad. So a lot of captains who hire other captains to run their boats, they force them to go no matter what because the bills have to be paid. And if the weather's really rough, it can be very 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 tough on the crew on the gear on the boats on everything and it can be a pretty poor experience so i get to make all the decisions which is worth its weight in gold to me the business side am i making as much as i was uh in the tennis world probably not when you add all the things up together uh, but making less and being able to be with my wife when i want to go on vacations when i want to have my first mate be on all my trips have my best friend with me all the time is totally worth it to me so i think officially i have been a captain for six years and like we said my roots are in the fishing industry i started on a uh let's see 19 foot maverick that my dad had custom built 
uh, way, way back when. I think it was a 1990, 19 something. And it got the job done, got me in a couple trips, got a couple paychecks coming. And then, like we said, our family boat was a 1993 261 Mako. 26 feet and I ran that for a year? Two um, years? Yeah, at least a year and a half. Probably two years. So I ran that boat for two years. Great boat, but it definitely was not what I wanted to fish on my whole life. Um, did it get the job done? 100%, but it wasn't my dream boat. And so then the next big hurdle was, okay, so now I have this boat that's worth $10,000, $20,000. I don't know what I sold it for and i want to upgrade to the next level the, the bigger better boat the more you can charge the more comfortable everybody is it's just better experience for everybody and i think what year was that 2021 uh we got the twin the 2021 yeah gosh yeah so 2021 ish comes around and i do a ton of research and trying to get money moved in certain places and having another panic attack. Panic attack number one was quitting a $150,000 job to become a fishing captain. Heart attack number two is can I afford a new boat? And moved some money around, sold the Mako, and okay, I think I can make it work. And I pulled the trigger and I bought a 31 Twin V, catamaran style twin hull and that was a complete game changer for us uh, we were able to go farther we were able to go faster everybody was way more comfortable more storage and business started to roll i think that was year four year four three, three or four three, three or four and you could see lucky strike gaining speed and we're gaining speed and like we said year four was a good year for us and you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, this is doable, we're gonna be able to make it. So, fish the Twin V for two years and business has just exploded. Um, I started a YouTube channel, which you guys are hopefully watching now, Instagram, and then I meet Brad and Brianna at Onslow Bay Boatworks. And I'm currently in my 31 Twin V and you know we start a conversation and long story short we worked together we had a deal that made everybody happy i sold the twin v another insane heart attack and i bought a brand new 2023 onslow bay custom built the way i wanted it and you want to talk about scared to death financially another huge leap of faith I have an amazing wife who supported me who didn't kill me he does a lot of research so it's he does a lot of research, so I trust that he has the boat knowledge and he's gonna be smart. He doesn't like to be stressed about money, so I trust him. But making a commitment like that is so important to do it with a family member, to do it with your significant other, whoever it is, so you have the support, because doing it by yourself, these boats are incredibly expensive. Um, YouTube starts to roll. Onslow Bay and I's relationship starts to grow. I start getting phone calls from other companies we're wanting to work together. And current date, we have Rodan Marine as a sponsor. Absolutely incredible company, GPS trolling motor, gotta have it. Realtree Fishing, so all of Realtree, they, long story short on that one, thank yeah. my wife for that connection. But Realtree has sponsored the boat, you've seen our wrap. Uh, Quantum is another big sponsor. We've got Suzuki is an insane sponsor with uh, Sawyer's Outboards here in Naples, Florida. If you wanna go see them about any outboard stuff, they are amazing. Um, Abyss Batteries for our trolling motor is awesome. Salty Hull, all of our cleaning products. Um, Uflex steering, our steering mechanisms for our boats. So how many is that? Eight, seven, seven sponsors in the last- Oh, Sirius. Oh, Sirius XM, all your weather needs all your chart plotter needs, music, all that stuff. So eight, mm -hmm. eight sponsors that I have gotten uh, in the last year. And the world is our oyster. We're call getting calls every single day. It's, uh, it is a dream come true. 
no questions asked, even though I never thought I'd be a charter captain. Never in a million years, just because my great grandfather did it, my dad did it, I never had you know, the dream of being a charter captain. I was you know, doing the tennis world and I was just gonna let God take the reins and kind of see what happens and here we are in a brand new 2023 Onslow Bay with my amazing first mate. It's a rip. Oh, you got a headset. Yes, he is on every one of my trips, no matter what. If you love dogs, he will be on every charter, no matter what. Um, but that's kind of our quick little story in a nutshell. Is it worth it? I think I went over this, but I'll go over it again. If you have the personalities to become a charter captain, dealing with other people, working incredibly long hours, having months where you don't have any work. So we had, we just recently had Hurricane Helene, Hurricane Milton go by and it was like 40 days in a row of no paychecks for me. Had to cancel a bunch because of the hurricane, canceled some because I was helping family members and friends. So are you okay with that? But I'm sure some of you are looking at this video, maybe not to be a charter captain, but to you know do your own thing. If you have the ambition to start your own business, invent something, whatever it is. Oh, there goes the stingray. Hmm. Right, my recommendation, give it a try. Give it a shot and what's the worst thing that could happen is it fails and you lose a year, two years, but I guarantee you in those two years, you will learn a ton about yourself. You'll grow through it and then more than likely you can always go back to a trade job or go back to the job that you had but being your own boss is incredible making the own decisions making the hours and doing life the way you want to i strongly 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 recommend it try it just give it a shot trust in your gut and do it because if you have the mindset if you have the ambition you can always make it happen ramen noodles they're always your friend what that is such a joke. Peanut butter and jelly. I'm the one who says I can live off peanut butter and jelly. That's why you get to do this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I can. And you I don't, don't want, want to. <laughs> I don't want to, but I can. You look shocked every time I say it. Yeah. So I think that's it. We are on an off day. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go set some stone crab traps. So today is an off day for us. And I'm not working. Being my own boss with my wife. She got I do have hours. work today. She got off a couple hours of work. Ripster, you're always on the on the job. But we've got a few stone crab traps. And another perk of being a charter captain is you can always eat fish. So your meals are taken care of. If you, if you need to cut down on your bills for restaurants and eating and all that sort of stuff, most of the time you can get all of your fish from your charters. You can go out, catch a few fish, and feed yourself for the week. Um, but we want stone crabs. So we are going to head offshore put some stone crabs in the water. We'll show you guys that. And if you ever want uh, to book a trip with me, all my information will be in the description below. Hopefully this video helps at least one person out there. Take the plunge, take the step and work towards your dreams. Dream do job, dream life, dream whatever it is. Go for it. You got to do it. Give it a shot. And we're going to head offshore, start putting these in the water. Oh, and all of my sponsors, I do have discounts codes for all of them. If you're interested in anything fishing, hunting related, it'll all be in the description below. If you have any questions, uh, not sure how much advice I can give you, but I'd love to help out any way that I can. So as promised, we have made it offshore just a little bit and we're gonna set a few stone crab traps. So we've got them baited. We got a rope, so. I feel like I'm on deadliest catch. If you don't know how to do all the stone crab stuff, our next video, which you'll see, will be how to build it, how it all works. But right now, we are just going to throw some traps overboard. Throw it overboard? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> I think people really need to know what kind of day I'm about to have. And the fact that I'm out here this afternoon, midday. What day are you about to have? I have a youth overnighter tonight. I'm literally going to be up all night long. In the middle of my day, I'm out here baiting and throwing crab traps. That doesn't earn me wife of the year, among the, uh, many other things. I don't know what will. Am I throwing it? I will let you know, my dear. Yeah, you. Holy the throw. Oh gosh.
Done. Wow. Good job. Ready, go. Oh, there's a jellyfish right under there. Almost squashed it. Two down. Number three, go. Fire in the hole. So if you're unfamiliar with stone crabbing, recreational like us, we're allowed five traps per person. So Aubrey has five. I zip tied the rope somehow. So Aubrey has five, I have five. And we're supposed to put name tags. Oh my gosh, what are the, the odds? No, I need another zip tie. It's fine? Yeah, sure. So we set four off at one spot. Now we're coming to our second spot. We're probably going to drop the rest of them. And uh, give it, I think, two weeks, something like that. I got it. There you go. And uh, like I said, if you want to see what we caught, if we caught any, next week's video, that is where we're going to uh, haul these things. Okay. Whenever you're ready. There you go. One, two, three, go. All right, y'all, so that is our 10 stone crab traps. We are going to head back to the dock. Like I said, this video is very different than what we typically do. Uh, if you like hunting, fishing in Southwest Florida, love for you guys to join the family. Like, share, and subscribe as always. And my lovely wife, my ripster, and myself. We'll catch you next week. Love you guys. Bye.